In this video, we'll discuss Debye Haeckel limiting law followed by Debye Haeckel screening length and the plot corresponding to Debye Haeckel limiting law. Now, why do we need Debye Haeckel limiting law? Now, in most of the models that we've discussed so far in electro chemistry, we have assumed that the solution uh, behaves ideally, which is not true in real cases. Now, in non ideal cases, the, there is a marked deviation from ideality. And why does it come? We'll see that. So, if we consider the case of ideal solutions, for ideal solution, we have chemical potential is equals to chemical potential of the ideal solution at standard conditions plus RT ln C, where C is the concentration, mu i is the chemical potential of the ideal solution and mu i naught is the chemical potential of the ideal solution at standard temperature pressure. Now for real solution or non-ideal solution, this changes to mu i not i mu equals to mu naught plus rt ln a okay now this a is the activity now activity is the effective concentration now in real solutions the cons effective concentration is different from the concentration which you will expect in either solution because of the interaction between present the molecules now this is re represented as gamma into c where c is the concentration and gamma is the uh, uh, as, uh, what do you say activity coefficient now this gamma actually accounts for the deviation so in the same way i can represent this as rt ln gamma into c now this product can be separated and written as rt ln gamma therefore mu naught plus rt ln gamma can be written as mu i plus rt ln gamma and this is the chemical potential of the real system okay so i believe this will be mu i naught okay fine so you see the chemical potential of the real system is different from the chemical potential of the ideal system by a factor rt ln gamma this is the part which causes the deviation from ideality and by using Debye Haeckel limiting law, we want to account for how much it is deviating from ideality. We'll see the properties that we want to account. Okay. Now we have found one quantity gamma, and how do we express that? Now in the previous videos, we have seen that for a one is to one electrolyte, say for example, you have an electrolyte Mx, which gives M plus plus X minus, the gamma, which is gamma plus and gamma minus. The product of the two, gamma plus minus, which is the geometric mean, is represented as like this. So we get gamma plus minus equals to gamma plus gamma minus to the power 1 by 2. Now in case this was not a 1 is to 1 electrolyte, that means it was not a uni-univalent electrolyte, it was something like MPXQ, which dissociates to give P times MQ minus plus Q times XP minus. My mean, uh, my mean ionic activity coefficient will become since these are ions, so it, the activity coefficients now corresponds to ionic activity coefficient. This will be gamma plus to the power p, gamma minus to the power q. The coefficients come whole to the power one by p plus q. So this is when the uh, coefficients are not 1 for both the cation and the anion. Okay. Now, in case of uh, electrolyte solutions, why is the deviation from ideality occurring? Okay. Now, in ideal solutions, we consider that the molecules don't have any kind of interaction between each other. But in case of real solutions, they have interactions. Now, in our case, since we are considering electrolytes, they have Coulombic interactions, which can be attraction or it can be repulsion, but they have Coulombic interactions. Now, when there are Coulombic interactions, we expect some kind of energy to be involved. Now, the energy may increase or the energy may decrease depending on the kind of interaction that is happening. Now, so that means so far we have seen that gamma plus minus, which is causing the deviation from ideality, is related to chemical potential. Now, if you want to find the change in energy, now this chemical potential can be related to energy that is Gibbs free energy by the expression that Gm in ideal solutions is equals to gamma plus ideal gamma, uh, sorry mu plus ideal mu minus ideal that means the chemical potential of the cation and the chemical potential of the anion 
okay now for real solutions this ideality is lost and we only have the chemical potential the two ions in real solutions okay now in place of this gamma plus i can put this so i will get gamma plus ideal plus rt ln gamma plus at the same time for the anion i will get gamma plus, uh, gamma minus ideal plus rt ln gamma minus now this gamma plus uh, of the ideal and gamma minus ideal corresponds to free energy of the ideal solution so i will get free energy of the real solution equals to free energy of the ideal solution plus rt ln rt ln i can write the gamma plus gamma minus as product so i will get rt ln gamma plus gamma minus now this can be changed to the main ionic activity coefficients and i can write this as rt ln gamma plus minus so this is the relation of the change in energy due to the uh, deviation from ideality which is occurring in case of uh, my electrolyte solutions okay fine so obviously you can see this is the real situation this is ideal solution this is the deviation okay now we know how to convert or how to connect the deviation into energy now let us find how we can quantify this gamma now mean ionic activity coefficients uh, when related okay so okay we'll discuss it later so mean ionic activity coefficients can be represented by log gamma plus minus equals to minus a z plus z minus into under root i now i'm not going with the derivation from that how we get this equation from this because th at this point of time that is not needed but let us figure out what this means so we have a as a constant z plus z minus as a charge on the two ions and i is the ionic strength which is given by half summation ci zi square ci is the concentration okay now using this for any solution we can find gamma using this expression and using this expression we can find the change in energy due to that okay fine now if you see this expression there are three things here i which is the ionic strength which is a property of the solution and we have z plus z minus which is a property of the ions so the gamma plus gamma minus depends on two things the property of the solution which involves concentration and the charge on the ions the, which is the property of the ions okay now it's the plot of log gamma plus and gamma minus and we'll see the uh verification and uh, modification that that have been done to this equation to get better fitting with the experimental results now let us look at the plot of the divisional integral so the expression that we get that log gamma plus minus equals to minus a mod of z plus z minus under root i this is the expression for the debye huckel uh, limiting law okay now let us look at the plot so the plot is log gamma plus minus versus under root i now as you can see the slope of the plot is negative so we expect the line to have a decreasing slope uh, to have a decrease yeah, to have a decreasing slope so we get straight lines like this now what does the slope depends on so the slope is a mod of z plus z minus wherein a is a constant but this quantity is not a constant now this might be an uni univalent electrolyte like 1 is to 1 where slope will be then a or it can be 1 is to 2 slope will be 2 times a it can be 1 is to 3 slope will be 3 times a so it will change so as the slope increases the steepness of the line increases so i can consider this to be of a 1 is to 1 solution 1 is to 1 electrolyte like say mx it can be mx2 or it can be mx3 okay but in real situations but that means in experimental situations it is found that this deviates from ideality at higher concentration 
This deviates from adenity at lower concentrations alone. So this is the deviation which is being caused from ideal from the experimental results that we get. The blue line is the one that we get from calculated from this expression, and the black one is that we get from the experimental results. Now, how do we account for this? That is why we use the extended Debye Huckel limiting law. There is a modification in the expression which says log gamma plus minus equals to minus a modulus of z plus z minus under root i divided by 1 plus b under root i plus c i wherein again a, b and c are constants. Now the benefit of using this expression is that you get better fitting with the experimental results even at high concentrations that means at very high concentrations only this deviates from ideality so let us say this is a line for the calculated one at very high concentration only you start getting the deviation in previous case the deviation was again even at lower concentration but you get better fitting for a wider range of the ion strength a wider range of concentration okay now why is the law known as limiting law now as we have seen even with the modification the expression the values that we get from the expression deviates from the uh, experimental results that means as the concentration increases deviation occurs but it is limiting in the fact that as you decrease the concentration no matter how is what is the nature of the solution that means no matter what is the nature of the electrolyte whether it's a 1 is to 1 electrolyte or 1 is to 2 electrolyte all the solutions all the electrolytes will obey this expression log gamma plus minus equals to minus a modulus z plus z minus under root i that means irrespective of the nature of the electrolyte the solution will follow this law that is why it is known as the limiting law okay uh, we have seen the plot fine now let us look at what is known as a debye heckel screening lamp now initially it was i mean we expect that the potential will be equals to some constant z i by r that is what we expect from electrostatics that potential be proportional to z i by r but in case of electrolyte solutions it was found the plot looked something like this it was an exponentially decreasing plot and a sharp decreasing plot so when it was quantified we found that this is actually equals to b beta z i by r e to the power minus k r by r d and this decrease is occurring because of this factor exponential decrease is occurring because of the r by r d factor now this r d is some kind of a cutoff that means after this the potential decrease can, uh, the electric potential decreases exponentially or uh, very quickly now this cutoff depends on two things first the concentration of solution second the nature of the solution now when we say the nature of the solution it depends on two things first is the charge and second is the permittivity of the solution now both concentration and charge are contained in the ionic strength permittivity is represented by epsilon r now again i'm not going to the derivation that how from here we reach the expression of rd i'm directly writing the expression because the derivation is not needed so we get debye heckel screening length equals to epsilon r epsilon 0 kbt upon 2 e square na into i to the power half okay now er is the permittivity of the solution e naught is the permittivity in vacuum kb is the Boltzmann constant t is the temperature i is the ionic strength na is the Avogadro number e is the charge on one electron okay fine now why do we need this because if you consider electrolyte solution and electrolyte solution every ion is surrounded by oppositely charged ion that means let us say we have a central ion which is surrounded by the uh, oppositely charged ions which are known as the counter ions now every ion has a sphere of the counter ions which is known as the ionic sphere 
Now, increase uh, starting from the center line to the uh, counter line, there is a potential, and as it goes away from the counter line, the potential decreases exponentially. So, to uh, quantify that, in order to account for that decrease in the potential, we have this formula, and from there we get the Debye Haeckel spinning length, or which is also known as the Debye length. Okay. Okay, this is it. So now we'll look at the questions which have come in net gate from these three topics. Okay, so the first question we have is from gate 2008. And the question says, according to debye Haeckel limiting law, the mean activity coefficient of the concentration is given as 5 into 10 power minus 4 moles per kg. That means it is molarity. The solution is of calcium chloride which dissociates to calcium 2 plus plus 2 Cl minus. So if this was C, this will be C and this will be 2 times of C. Okay. Now C is concentration. They have given it the temperature but you don't need it. They have also said that A equals to 0 0.509 and you have to find gamma plus minus. So we know we need I. So we get half. Calcium concentration is C, charge is 2 square, uh, chloride concentration is 2C, charge is 1 square. So I get half into 4 times C plus 2 times C is 6 times C. This gets cancelled. I get 3 times C which is 15 into 10 power minus 14. So I get log gamma plus minus equals to minus 0.509. Z plus Z minus, that means 2 into 1 is 2, it is modulus, so it becomes positive, under root 15 into 10 power minus 4. Now, 15 is somewhere like 3.89, under root of 15, so I can write it as 3.9, I will get 0 0.509 into 2 is 1.02, approximately into 3.9. This will give me somewhere, okay, and into 10 power minus 2. This will give me somewhere like 4 into 10 power minus 2 with a negative sign. Now, when I remove log, I will get gamma plus minus equals to 10 to the power minus 4 into 10 power minus 2, which will give me somewhat like 0 0.91, which is given in my option number D. Okay. So the very next year, there was another question that means gate 2009, which says, according to the Debye Haeckel limiting law, if the concentration of a dilute aqueous solution of KCl, so you have KCl which dissociates to give K plus and Cl minus. They're asking how the uh, value of ln gamma plus minus change if you increase if you increase the concentration by four times okay now concentration comes where in ionic strength now ionic strength is directly proportional to concentration and ln gamma plus minus whether it's log or it's ln it is directly proportional to under root i so i can say it is directly proportional to under root c therefore if this is four it will be proportional to so let's say this is c and I get ln gamma plus minus directly proportional to under root 4, which is 2. Now, since there is a minus sign equals to minus a into z plus z minus, and the change is 2, that means it decreases because of the negative sign, it will decrease. Now, it decreases by a factor of 2 because we have got that is directly proportional to 2. So, which is given in my option number. A. Okay, so the next question we have is from NET and the question states, this question came in December 2012 and the question says that the potential in the debye Haeckel theory is proportional to and you have seen that potential is proportional to e to the power minus k r by r d which is given in our option number C. Okay. So the next question we have 
is from June 2014. And the question says, the solution of three electrolytes having the same ion strength and different dielectric constant. That means I is same. You have to find the relative Debye-Hecker screening lens. You have to find Rd for epsilon R in terms of 42581. So we know this is epsilon R, epsilon naught, KVT, 2E square NAI. Now already if the experiment is conducted in uniform temperature, KVT, NAI, E2 all are cancelled, E0 is cancelled. And it's at the same thing is also cancelled. So that means you get that Debye Heckel screening length is directly proportional to the permittivity. So we get ER will be in the form of 4 to the power half, 25 to the power half, 81 to the power half. So you get 259, which is given in my option number B. Okay, so the next question we have is from June 2016. Now the question says the two aqueous one is to one electrolyte systems A and B. So there are two systems, both of which are one is to one. And they are saying there are temperatures Ta and Tb and concentration Ca and Cb. So this is Ta, Tb and concentration of Ca and Cb. Now they are saying that their divide lengths will be equal. So if their divide length is equal, you get Rd of A equals to epsilon R, epsilon naught, Kt, A by 2E square na and in terms of in place of uh, i i can write c a and why i'm writing that now if you see if it is a one is to one electrolyte i get i equals to half c into one square plus c into one square that means this will be two into c two two gets cancelled i becomes c so this will be equal to Rd of B, which is epsilon naught, epsilon R, KTB, 2E square NACB to the power half. Now, since they're equal, first of all, I can remove the powers, then the constant terms get cancelled. Okay, now they have not mentioned anything about the permittivity, so I'm considering they are also same so we are left with ta by ca equals to tb by cb so that means if ta is equals to n times tb ca has to be equals to n times of cb there cannot be the change in the numerator and the denominator so that is given in option number a where it is said that ta equals to 2 times tb and ca equals to 2 times cb so that means my answer is option number so the next question we have is from June 2011. A very straightforward question. They have asked you the equation for a Debye Heckel limiting law, which is given in my option number C. That is log gamma plus minus equals to minus of 0 0.509 z plus z minus under root mu. Mu is the ion strength here. Don't confuse it with the uh, chemical potential. Okay. So the next question we have is again from the same year, it says that you have to find the value of Debye Heckel screening length. They have given you 2e square na by epsilon naught kt under root approximately equals to 30. They have also given you the concentration as 0.03 for a solution of Na2SO4 and the epsilon r is given as 100. Now if this is Na2SO4, this will dissociate as 2Na plus plus SO4 2 minus. So that means this becomes 2 times C, this becomes C. I will be equals to what? Half into concentration of Na square plus concentration of SO4 charge square 
2c plus 4c, 6c, half of 6c is 3c, which is 0 0.09. Putting the value of c from here. Now the vehicle screening length formula is epsilon r, epsilon naught, kt, 2e square, na i to the power half. Now when we say, now out of these 2 e square na by epsilon naught kt that means the inverse of what is present here is given so we get 1 by 30 this is out of the ball out of the square root because it is already given in the square root so i am left with epsilon naught by i to the power half so this can be written as under root 100 by 0 0.09 this can be written as 1 by 30 into 10 upon 0 0.3. So this can be written as 10 upon 9. This changes to 10 upon 9, which is given in my option number A. Okay. So the next question we have, I believe, is from gate. Okay. So this came in gate 2011 and the question says that for a 1 is to 1 molar aqueous NaCl solution they have given you NaCl which dissociates to Na plus and Cl minus and they have asked you the relation between gamma plus minus and A. So the formula is as we know log of gamma plus minus minus a z plus z minus under root i now z plus and z minus both are one the product also remains one so that is gone and i'm left with i we know i is equals to half into ci one square c again one square since it is a both have same concentration so this becomes 2c square and this 2 is gone i get c they have already said that c is 1 so that is also gone so i becomes 1 so i get gamma plus minus 10 to the power minus a which is given in my option number d okay so the next question we have is from okay so the question is from day 2001 long back so the question says the mean ionic activity coefficient of so concentration is 0 0.0005 uh, solution is of CaCl2 temperature is 298 Kelvin then so we have to find the mean ionic activity coefficient so you get you need to first find I so this will dissociate as Ca2 plus and 2Cl minus I becomes half C into 2 square plus 2 C into 1 square. Again, this will give me 3 into C. C is what? 0 0.0005, which gives me 1.5 into 10 power minus 4. Okay. Now you have to find the mean ionic activity coefficient. So you will get log of gamma plus minus equals to minus A. 2 into 1 is 1 under root 1.5 into 10 power minus 4 okay so this would give me again 0 0.509 into 2 1.5 into 10 power minus 4 this will not be 10 power minus 4 this will be 10 power minus 3 so if I convert it to 15, it becomes 15 to 10 power minus 4. So we have done this type same question previously that is 0 0.91 option number B. Okay. So we have one more question from the plot of log gamma plus minus and under root i and the question came in the question came in June 16. Now the question says Aqua solutions of NaCl, CaCl2 and AlCl3 show the following plots of under root i and log gamma plus minus. So you have three plots and they have asked you to connect 
A, B, and C. What are the probable electrolyte solutions? Now, as I told you, the slope depends on the Z plus Z minus. So this is the slope, smallest slope, this is the largest slope, and this is the intermediate slope. Now, as I already told you, this might be for MX, this might be for MX2, this might be for MX3. And in this case, which are NaCl, CaCl2, and AlCl, LaCl3. So that means NaCl will be A, CaCl2 will be B, and LaCl3 will be C, which is given in my option number B. Okay, so one more question which came in June 2019, that is last year, from this very same topic of debye huckel limiting law, and it's a very straightforward question, we'll see that. Okay, so this question says that you have Na2SO4 solution which has concentration of 2 molar. So you have Na2SO4 which dissociates to give 2 Na plus plus SO4 2 minus. So this becomes 2C, this becomes C. You have to find the formula for uh, chemical potential. Now we know chemical potential of any solution equals to mu naught plus RTLN activity for real cases. Now this activity can be changed to gamma into C or this expression can be further expanded to RTLN gamma C. Now for C, what do we get? Now concentration is, in terms of concentration, this is 2C square into C, why? Concentration of Na plus square into concentration of SO4 2 minus. So I will get 2C square means 4C square into C which is 4C cube. C is what? 2. So I get 32 which is 2 to the power 5. Now let's go for gamma. Now we know gamma plus minus is equals to gamma plus gamma minus. And if they have P and Q as coefficient, this becomes P plus Q. So I can replace gamma accounting for both the ions. I will get mu naught plus RT ln 2 to the power 5 plus RT ln gamma plus minus to the power 3. So this 5 comes in the front. This becomes 5 RTLN2. This 3 comes in the front. This becomes 3 RTLN gamma plus minus, which is given in my option number 1. Okay. So you can see that questions have come very regularly from long back to very recent, and it is one of the favorite topics for gate and net examiners uh, in the exams. From electrochemistry, you can practice as many questions as you want. Most of the uh, explanations and graphs have been taken from Atkins Physical Chemistry. If you want to read more, you can follow that or any other standard physical chemistry book.